brought to you almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. Suds, suds, suds. It's time for more suds. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another suds episode where every beer is worth discussing. This is good old gal Juliana, and with me, as always, is my bitter half, good old boy Dave. I'm going to assume you meant that as extra special bitter. <laughs> Maybe. I'll never tell. Yeah. We'll air that out later. Uh, with us also is Reverend Mark. Hello. Good to be here. And good old boy Kendall. Hey, everyone. Great to be here again. Kendall and his wife uh, actually have a... Don't laugh already. That's not the funny part. So Kendall and his wife have a blog that they do each week. We'll find out more about that at the end of the show. Yay. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Peabody Wine and Beer Merchants in lovely Boone, North Carolina. They carry the largest and most eclectic selection of wine and beer in the Southeast. If you can't get up the mountain, get to them online at www.peabodyswineandbeer.com. And if you can get up the mountain and get to Boone, Make sure you go to the Pat Boone Museum and Artifact Collection. It is dedicated to the city's founder and chief resident. Word is he killed a bar when he was three. A bar? Yeah. Mm, Dave, I, I think I think that's <laughs> yeah. Daniel Boone. <laughs> Don't you think? Wikipedia is struck again. <laughs> oh, boy. Stay off the internet there, Dave. Um our sud segments are all about beer, beer, and you guessed it, more beer. Today's show is a lovely brewery takeover episode. We're going to discuss beer from Cigar City in Tampa, Florida. Yay! Yay! Mm. Okay, so the beers that we are going to be discussing today include Florida Cracker, High Lie, High Lie the White Oak version. Invasion Pale Ale, Maduro Brown Ale, Florida Man Double IPA, Florida Man, Big Sound Scotch Ale, Azimuth Session Ale, or sorry, Azimuth Session IPA, the Holly Oli IPA. I think that's Jolly Ollie. Is it Jolly Ollie? Okay, sorry. It's Jolly. <laughs> this time it's Jolly with a J. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Let me rephrase that. Jolly Ollie IPA and the Impy Barbicane Moon Gun. Wow. One thing we won't be talking about today is the word stout. It would have been great to have some Hunapu, but um, unfortunately we can't get it. What sort um, of poo is that? Hunapu. Mm. Mm. Poo in the can <laughs> or poo in the bottle? Kind of poo. Um, I guess both, right? Could it come both ways? I think it's Have only a bottle. Is it only in a bottle? Okay, fine. Okay. Okay. Whoa. And <laughs> sorry. You like that button Stuck there, a little Dave? Bit. <laughs> Stick. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a well-documented lover of stouts, I this really makes me sad. But you know, for hop heads amongst us, you're all going to be really happy today. Yeah, part of the challenge in covering breweries with local and regional distribution is availability. Special releases, you know, really can just be a case of dumb luck whether you can get it or not. You have to be in the right place at the right time. And for some of these breweries, even year-round releases are a challenge. According to Cigar City's website, uh, they're distributed in their home state of Florida, of course, but also New York, Virginia, Georgia, and good old boy Mike's favorite state, Alabama. Alabama. Mm. And once again, 
Well, you know, that's one reason why collaboration brews are so wonderful. Uh, they're great. They're a great way for brewers uh, to get their beer and their name out to people who might not get a chance to know about them otherwise. So Cigar City, or CCB as their friends call them, uh, has done a lot of collaboration brews with brewers like Alesmith, Seventh Sun, Boulevard, New Belgium, Terrapin, Swamphead, Funky Buddha, Nantahala, Great Lakes, Coronado, McKellar, and Evil Twin, just to name a few. McKellar and Evil Twin, I wonder which brother they like best. That's an impressive list, but the one that sticks out is Nantahala. That is a small brewery in a very small town, so that's that's cool of them. They yeah. must have a friend, or know a friend, yeah. have a friend who's a brewer well, or something. And, and geographically, like they're all over the place, too. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I floated down the Not to Hollow once. Really? Is that the same thing we're talking about? Maybe. Same, yeah, same place. It's a cold <laughs> river. It's cold in August. <laughs> All right. Well, we're not going to get into any family drama here between McKellar and Evil Twin. But anyways, let's learn a bit about Cigar City in the words of owner and founder Joe Redner, courtesy of graphpeer.com. So, good old boy Kendall, you know how to read. Take it away. Well, I don't do a great Joe Redner impersonation, so this is just in my own voice. (laughs) My path toward opening a brewery began in 1994 when I traveled to Portland, Oregon for a wedding. Prior to this trip to this hops-laden land of the Pacific Northwest, I'd only dabbled with a few craft beers and imports available to me in Florida. I'd certainly never had freshly brewed craft beer. In Portland, my taste buds were exposed to beers I'd never imagined and to freshness and Freshness and craftsmanship I never tasted. I became a beer lover during that trip. In the years that followed, I began to plan my vacations and travels around beer destinations, always looking for new beer experiences. Boy, I know that feeling. These are my words, but I do the same thing. So back to Joe's words. (laughs) Years later, I took up home brewing. In 2004, I started writing a column about beer for the St. Petersburg Times, which allowed me to spread the good word about American craft beer to a mostly non-beer-focused audience. In the back of my mind, I dreamed of bringing the vibrancy and creativity I discovered in the craft beer scenes of other regions to Tampa. There was never a single aha moment for me. I just started taking small steps towards making the dream a reality. In the beginning, it consisted of getting an idea for what startup costs might be, Then I began figuring costs for raw ingredients, rent, build-outs, and salaries. Later came the year-long stretch for er, search for startup money. Back when my dream was just still a dream, I concluded that my hometown of Tampa hadn't always done the best job of exporting its unique history and culture. I wanted to educate people about the town I loved as much as I grew to love craft beer. I made up my mind that spreading the word about Tampa and its Cuban-American heritage and its past as the world's leading producer of cigars would be an integral part of what I do at Cigar City Brewing. With that pretty basic mission, make interesting beers and share Tampa's history, I finally sold my first batch of commercially brewed beer in March of 2009. Nice. Woohoo! Mm-hmm. And I'm glad they did. Me too. Yeah, ain't that there the truth. Go. So, before we get started, you know, into the beer and stuff, what was your first recollection of Cigar City? I mean, Cigar City is one of those where, you know, it's a, I almost want to say it's like a whale of a brewing company that everyone strives to have, you know, if not on hand at their home, um, you know, at least seek out once a year. Um, You're right. Kendall, what was your, what's your first? Um... The first time I ever tasted it was the High Lie. Mm-hmm. Um, a mm-hmm. friend had mm-hmm. uh, some of that that they had brought back from Florida probably about three years ago. You know, I'd heard the legends of Hunapu, but High Lie was the first beer I ever tasted, and I realized it was a quality IPA, and this was a brewery that was living up to its hype. Yeah, yeah. Mark? Well, for me, every May, June, um, we vacationed down on the Panhandle, and so it was a couple, couple of years ago. Um, I was just really looking around. And I have to say, the Piggly Wigglies are doing a much better job these days. But in years past, (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> it was a it was a beer wasteland. But mm. uh, but I was uh, the so the first Cigar City uh, six pack that I you know my eyes fell upon, and it certainly seemed to uh, describe what I was hungry for or thirsty for that day was uh, the Florida Cracker, and uh, mm. you know things were sugar you know sugar beach and just intense heat and hiding out under an umbrella with a couple of six packs of that stuff iced down it was just so good that's a great beach beer yeah yeah Yeah. wow that's cool dave well you may not know this about me but i was born on a fishing boat uh in the uh, we knew that yeah so (laughs) (laughs) that explains a lot (laughs) wow (laughs) i really think that was gonna go that way (laughs) but uh no um i think i'm kind of like kendall and and probably a lot of it has to do with with where we live um and that the the closest place we can get uh any cigar city is is alabama so and and usually the only two you can really find are um well i, I guess you can get invasion now but it was high Alive was the main one you could get and then i think you could get maduro mm-hmm. as well but high Alive was the first one i had and um i was like man this i it was it was one of those things where yeah it did live up to the hype it was as good as i'd heard yeah yeah, and I'm the same way. It was the highlight. And weren't they at GABF last year? They were, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I mean, I'm thinking that's probably when I had a variety of things to drink besides the highlight. And I kept thinking, wow, yeah, this is this is one I need to go you know, seek out. An, a variety to drink at GABF, too, and I remember none of it. So... Good. That's probably good. Glad I'm remembering for you, then. Well, that's why I hired you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to the show. Dave. Okay. So let's uh, let's get down to drinking some beer. All so right. So today I will get the honor of doing the Sudge Ratings, or I guess the Sudge Ratings get the honor of being done by me. <laughs> Sounded kind of dirty. I don't know if I should. <laughs> yeah, I yeah this, and, uh, this is a family friendly show, yeah, Daniel. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. moving yeah. on. Family friendly beer show. Um, so today we'll be reviewing, the, tasting these beers, and rating them using our signature, our Suds ratings and signature belching sounds. Here are those Suds ratings now. Number one, that sucks. Give me anything but a bud. Number two, was that a belch? Number three, ah, what a relief. Number four, a body should really not make that sound. And number five, listen to that hang time, give me another. Okay, Dave. <laughs> that was awesome. I um, guess. So, start talking about the beer, buddy. Uh, oh, we're drinking. Stop, we're we're stop talking about beer. Buttons. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you give me this big screen full of buttons, and you say don't push them. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. All right, so um, so I'll tell you what I what I like, and then you're gonna tell me about it. Are you going to read the description? I'm going to read the description, buddy. That's what I thought happens around here. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess we're doing our top three each. Is that what we decided on? Three-ish. Yeah, three, uh, three-ish is good. <laughs> so I'm going to do three, and Mark's going to probably do three, and then Kendall's probably going to do four, and you're going to do 16. Somehow we only tried 10. <laughs> That's so, pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think you're right on there, buddy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the first beer I want to talk about is the first uh, Cigar City beer I ever had. High Lie. Oh. Yeah. High Lie IPA. Uh, for those of you that do not know, it is American style IPA um, at 7.5% ABV. It, um, according to the description from... The company, um, it pours copper in color with notes of citrus and topical fruit in the aroma. 
Flavor has upfront citrus bitterness with a hint of caramel and citrus and tropical fruit hop notes in the finish. Would you like to add anything to that, sir? Um, no, because <laughs> that's exactly what I wrote, the tropical <laughs> notes in the finish. Are you the copy editor? She stole your guys? notes, you yeah. know. I yeah. know, right? <laughs> yeah. Who do you think printed that out today? <laughs> no, um, this beer is as good today as I remember it the very first time. Um, you know, I think all of us, we drink so many IPAs and pale ales and hoppy beers of all sorts that... At times, you know, it's weird or, you know, it's hard for a certain one to stand out in the crowd. Um, but I think High Lie has a very, or High Lie has a very distinct flavor. And, uh, oh, it just started raining. Sorry. Sorry for everybody. Um, uh, so I really enjoyed it and I gave it a four. A four. Yeah. A four. A body should really not make that noise. <laughs> Can you tell we're not getting paid for this? <laughs> cool. All right. So, my yeah, what's number two? Number two. Number two is poop. Oh, my number. My second beer. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. That's my favorite button, by the way. Yeah, noticing so that. So when I can reach, I know what it is because it's red. It's Dave. Um. My second beer is Florida Man. Florida Man. All right. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. Let's see where Florida Man is. Okay. Um, Florida Man is an American double slash imperial IPA at 9.3%. It is named after an infamous Twitter account. Hmm. Look it up. So, yeah. So, you know, um, like, you know, I'm not a big tweeter or twitter or whatever and so but uh you know like you see in the news those weird stories about you know florida man arrested after attempting to make love to a tree or which actually actually that was a tennessee man that, but that really did happen <laughs> down in florida uh yeah he was yeah. in florida but you know the trees are friendlier down there um but anyways, so uh, all these random news stories you see that start Florida man or Florida woman or whatever, um, I guess there were enough of them that started Florida man did this or this or had this happen that um, it became like a, ph- a phenomenon down there and everything. So uh, Cigar City decided to dedicate a beer to them. And it is a big, uh, big hoppy double IPA. And um, Reverend Mark, what is the difference between a double IPA and an imperial IPA? You know, that's that's something we talk about a lot as beer judges. And, I, I mean, there are some some guidelines that would, you know, help you draw a line, if you will, you know, as you're, as you're trying to ferret that out. Uh, but a, a, an, an imperial IPA uh, tends to be more like a barley wine IPA, whereas a double IPA is just – Hoppier, hoppier, and and it's yeah. it's bigger all over. Yeah. Um, but I think those two terms are oftentimes very interchangeable. That's what I thought. I thought, yeah, that it was just two different ways of saying the same thing. It, it mostly know. is, but you know, I do find that there is there is some uh, conjecture, I guess, over sure. that. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think about this week, the uh, 120 minute just came out, and you know, nice. that's a great example of an imperial IPA, where mm. I would say 90 minute is more of a Double, double IPA. Yeah, I would put the emphasis on an imperial being as big as they get. You know, sure. Whereas a two a, a X IPA is just beyond the line. You know. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I actually like the, the way you guys said that because that actually makes more sense now. Double is a little bit more, but then a an imperial, you, there's no no ceiling. You know, it can go anywhere. But I guess until maybe it hits barley wine, then then it's like, what's an imperial IPA versus what's an imper- uh, an American barley wine? Right. And then there's even the 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 three X IPA that I, you know, you you see from time to time. So we're not going to talk yeah. about anything that starts it's with the three X. Three X. On this show. I forgot right. all about that. Family yeah. friendly. Yeah. Man on the show. <laughs> Well, anyways, uh, I think Florida Man is a really good beer. Uh, it doesn't really drink as big as it is. Um, 
and it's uh, it's actually a pretty well balanced beer to be I think nine point three percent or something like that. So um, I gave this one a four as well. My body should really not make that sound. That's what I hear all the time. Okay, and last and certainly not least, possibly most, uh, my favorite beer out of the entire flight today was Maduro. Maduro Brown Ale at 5.5%. It is their brown ale. Please do tell. Oh. So, um, so this beer being like 5.5%, it packs like an amazing amount of flavor. There's chocolate, a lot of chocolate, um, a little bit of toffee. It's almost like drinking a candy bar, like a really good good old candy bar but uh it's very balanced and smooth um it's got great mouthfeel and and i really really think it's probably one of the better brown ales um that i personally have had it's got a great even the aftertaste that lingers is nice and i gave this beer a five wow and we're gonna take a brief break Um, listen to our sponsor for a minute and we'll be right back hey guys welcome back um this is our brewery takeover with Cigar City, and next up is Reverend Mark going to talk about his top picks. It was really hard. I mean, we're drinking a lot of Cigar City today. so <laughs> Ten, I, ten you know, Cigar City beers. Ten That's beers. crazy. This is really hard to just narrow it down, and I was really surprised by my top three, at least two of my top three. Uh, so... I'll start out with the one that surprised me the most. And And I'll I'll explain for obvious reasons later, or reasons that were obvious to me. Was that a pumpkin beer? No. (laughs) (laughs) If it is pumpkin, I'm changing my mind here. No, it's this is excellent. I actually I went with the big sound Scotch Ale. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Now, I have to say that I don't drink a lot of Scottish ale or Scotch ales. When I first got into hobby brewing, uh, I really, you know, sort of was enamored with the the Wee Heavy, which this is uh, uh, a good illustration of that style. Um, but, you know, this is one of the beers, one of those within that beer class that's uh, a very malty beer. Uh, and I really like this particular interpretation. It's strong. It's a you know eight and a half percent alcohol by volume. Um, but I think it's a really nice introduction to people who you know are just kind of getting into um, craft beer. And uh, I think it's an inter- really good introduction to the wee heavy style uh, because sometimes, to be quite honest, it can it can be so malt forward. Uh, that it tastes kind of mm. like an English strong ale that's been laced with Ovaltine, and uh, wow, that's a neat <laughs> way of putting that. But it no, is. you're so right. <laughs> Did you see that on a bottle somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> that's just the image that comes to mind every time I drink some of this stuff, and it's just like, oh no, that's just too much. Um, but that's not true with this particular, you know, um, variation. Uh, so I think it's got really solid malt. It's got some real good kind of biscuit aromatics going on, a little bit of dark fruit, kind of some cherry aspect, and it has just enough lingering sweetness to make it, you know, nice and kind of savoring, but not off-putting. So Mm. I just thought in terms of it being just a really good wee heavy, I had to single it out. Mm. See, I, I was getting like coffee. And it and that and it threw me off a little bit. I almost felt like it was. It almost tasted more like a stout to me in some ways. Right. Yeah. But it's a little on the sweet. It's a little on the sweet side to be any yeah. kind of a stout, even an True. imperial stout. But yeah, I mean there there's some 
characteristics that are parallel, I guess. But I was I was really impressed. Just as like what is really true to style, and I thought this really uh, mm. nailed it. Very so cool. that's my first one, and I will gladly give it uh, a four. Uh, four. Uh, a body should really not make that sound. Cool. Nice. Next. All right. What's my next one? This one also kind of surprised me. Um. We'll hear what everybody else has to say in a minute. Okay, I really did. Um, the Jolly Ollie, um, mm. and, and and here's why. Uh, you sure, it's not Holly Oli. Holly okay, Oli. Is it Holly Oli? Does say Ollie? Okay, <laughs> Joe. I'm sorry about that. Uh, anyway, it may be one of my favorites of today because of the lineup um, of sh- of hops that it showcases. Yeah. Um, you know, in the in the hop intensity would uh, you know apparently is is there. It's an eighty four IBU um, beverage, um, but it doesn't really send your palate into the stratosphere. Mm. You know, I mean, it's it's very solid. It's layer. But what I like about it was the malt foundation, which I'm sure has to have some Maris Otter a good bit. It's fermented with American yeast, so it kind of has a clean, you know, sort of influence on the beer itself. Mm-hmm. And um, it um, it seems to just profile all the different, like, hot varieties, which I think there are about 10. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I just thought that it's a little off the, uh, you know, the main, uh, the road that we mostly travel when it comes to IPAs and, and imperial style IPAs. This, sure. is, this is more of a European um, interpretation, or more getting back to the basics of it being an imperial. I mean, a, rather a, a European or English style. Uh, but with the um, the addition of the American yeast, I think yeah. that it finishes a lot more clean as well. So, huh. for whatever reason, just on any given day, this and this being that any given day, I really like this one. Nice. And uh, I'll gladly give it a four. Again, a body uh, should really uh, not uh, make that sound. Man, cool. Reverend Mark's getting surprised left and right here. I know. Yeah, I am. I know, yeah. And I would have, looking at what I was going to drink today, I said, yeah. oh, yeah, like that, like that. And, and actually, these last two, I knew they were not as familiar. So, this last one, though, I have to say, Dave and I have not really collaborated on this. Uh, but I'll have to tell you that my top pick is the Maduro. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yay. <laughs> I don't really. Here, I'll play that. It's a complete waste of time. <laughs> we <I> just <laughs> duplicated. Yeah. Uh, I think it may be the single best brown ale, just basic brown ale yeah. commercially produced going in America right now. Uh, it is extremely approachable to a fault. Yeah. Uh, it's well attenuated uh, so that it uh, keeps it from being not even the least bit sweet. Uh, it's not a, a hoppy, uh, like an American brown, you know, that sometimes you get a lot of hops going on with the brown. It's not It's not that uh, kind of brown ale. And I think that it just allows the more subtle tones of the coffee and the roast and the chocolate to just kind of all meld together. And I have to say that, you know, this is sort of like the, the benchmark that I'm going for. My daughter's getting married in about another six weeks, and they have requested a brown ale as one of the beers that I have to produce for their reception. Nice. And this is what I want to hit. I think that, you know, those who dr- don't drink good beer are going to really like this. So this one, like Dave, I'll also give a 5 to. Wow. Listen to that hang time. Give me a Way to be, Reverend Mark. Way to be. Yeah, really impressive. Now you're on the good side. <laughs> May the force be with us. All right. <laughs> All right. Up next is go to boy Kendall. So what are your top picks? My top three-ish picks? Yeah. And I'll leave it at that. Three plus. <laughs> well, uh, I do have three here, but uh, I want to give an honorable mention, <laughs> like I like to do. Yes! To the, the just sarcasm, be- as he said. <laughs> Just because, I mean, I, how can I pick three of the of ten Cigar City beers and not pick Highlight? You know, I feel sure. like it deserves a mention just because 
It is a fantastic yeah, IPA. Absolutely. It's very rich, flavorful. I'm getting a lot of just a piney resin. Um, got that little bit of light caramel in the malt backbone going, but it's got a bright, crisp citrus finish on it, and it's mm. just a, it's close to a perfect I, IPA as you can get. Absolutely. So I, I just wanted to give a shout-out to it. It's a fantastic well, IPA. You might as well go ahead and rate it. Yeah, man. Well, I'd give it a four. Okay. We're trying to give it a four. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> body should really not make that sound. Okay, so my number three beer has already been mentioned as well, and that's the Florida Man. Oh, of course. Florida Man. Florida Man. Florida Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big uh, double IPA guy, but there's also a lot of double IPAs that I don't like. Yeah. Um, some of them are just hot bombs that are so aggressive, they rip the enamel off your teeth. Mm-hmm. Then there's those other ones that have such a strong caramel backbone that all you taste is the malt. Yeah. Um, even though it's supposedly 70, 80, 90 IBUs, mm. it's still just very caramelly. This one I thought was a great, uh, great balance. Uh, and for a double IPA, a very easy drinking double IPA. I think you mentioned that, yeah. Dave. It does not, does not drink like 9.3%. I agree. I'm g- guessing 7, 7.5 max. So there's some assertiveness there in both the malt and the hops, yeah. but they're well-balanced, and it's not overpowering. Neither side is um, stronger than the other. And that's not exactly easy to do, especially at, at that alcohol level, you know, because the, the more, you're, more of anything you're putting into something, the harder it is to maintain that balance, you know. Oh, yeah, sure. You know, and you want to get heavy-handed with it because, after all, you're making a big beer. So, right, yeah. yeah, having that balance is so but interesting. I, I will say, as it's warmed up, that alcohol is coming out. You can taste it a little more than when it was cold, and, and that's one thing I'd say. It, Florida man might be dangerous when he's cold. Uh, yeah. Because it hides that alcohol, but no, as it warms up, you can sense it. That's the mm-hmm. nature of Florida man. That's why you know people <laughs> people move south. You know when when the weather gets cold. Oh so, my gosh! Really enjoyed the Florida man. Uh, giving that a four. A four. Uh, 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 body uh, should really not make that sound. That's kind of like Florida in itself. You know, once it warms up, all the liquor comes out. You know, all the <laughs> spring break and. <laughs> All those kids going down there, and mm-hmm. beer bloggers headed down there to get in trouble. I hear you, man. Okay, so my number uh, two pick, nobody's mentioned this yet, uh, the Invasion Pale Ale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. So the Invasion Pale Ale, let me just find it quickly. Okay. Um, it is uh, 5% ABV. Which is really interesting. Um, it says, Golden Color Invasion Pale Ale is CCB's rendition of a sessiony hoppy ale. The aroma is quite tropical and offers suggestions of peach, mango, lime, and papaya. Upon further exploration, Invasion has a light caramel malt character laced with a slightly a slight breadiness, and the finish relinquishes a bounty of tropical and citrus hop flavor and bitterness. That's the thing I was thinking about. I didn't even read the description, but taken away from this was that sessionable. I think this holds up to what most people are marketing as session IPAs these yeah, days. I would say so. Yeah. 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 You could call this a session IPA and get away with it. This is a fantastic pale ale. Mm-hmm. My tastes have been changing over the last year. I'm getting away from the more caramelly pale ales and IPAs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's even, um, I saw an article the other day day where a lot of uh, breweries are reformulating recipes like Mm. star hill just reformulated their ipa to get away from the more caramely side to a lighter malt i agree i think even if caramel is used it may be a like a really uh uh on the higher end of the lower bond and just a tiny little bit for color but none for flavor Mm -hmm. yeah but yeah i agree but so this one, I, I, it had I picked up that lighter malt, that kind of a more bready malt, but without the caramel. Um, the hot bitterness is very noticeable, but yet it's not overpowering. It's not assertive. It's just pleasing, and it's a very drinkable pale ale. And of all the pale ales I've had lately, um, this is one of the better ones I've tried. So I, I could drink a lot more of this. I'm glad it's in cans. Uh, it makes me almost want to drive down to Alabama and pick up a few six-packs. <laughs> All right. Road trip. Yeah, Road trip. Michael go. Get Mike. 
Yeah. So, uh, yeah, a lot of citrus and pine in the hops and just a very nice drinking um, pale ale. So I'm giving that a suds rating of four. Four. Uh, the body uh, should really not make that sound. So I wanted to ask you, you know, that was pretty interesting about getting away from caramel. Is Do you think that's because um, a lot of the hop varietals or uh, there's a lot more hop varietals that are coming out with different flavors and... The caramel, and, and then also, a lot of people are not bittering as heavy on some of these IPAs. So the caramel, a lot of times, was to balance out that, that bittering. So when you pull that the bittering hop out and let the you know end of boil or dry hop flavors sort of be the main characteristic for that, then you don't need all that caramel, and it just ends up kind of gumming it up and, and making it kind of sweet. I think you're right. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think it mutes. It can mute a lot of the, the, the hop varieties that are now being used. Yeah. And, you know, one of my f- favorite kind of go-to American IPAs, um, if you go back to the classic sort of benchmark beers, yeah. is uh, Anchor Liberty. Oh, yeah. And and it's a, it's a very golden IPA. Mm-hmm. And uh, those hops just really, those American hops really, like, pop. Yeah. You know, because there's no caramel in there. So True. I like that. Yeah, oh, the yeah. Uh, the tropical fruit flavors and the other fruits you're getting from some of the newer hops just stand out so much better when the malt just kind of takes a, a side step out yeah. of the picture and just lets the hops shine. Yeah, absolutely. So, what'd you give this puppy? Um, he, he already... Did did yeah, yeah, we just oh, did, did that, but I'll do Where it again. Where were you? Yeah, a four. Sorry. Do it again. Sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, okay, fine. I'll give it a double four. Yeah, okay, it's a, fine. Going to give it an eight. <laughs> an eight. Okay. Um, we will be. Well, I've got one more. Oh, okay. See, that's what I got confused yeah. about. Okay. So, got one more glass of beer on the table. Here. His his third oh. beer was his second favorite. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so my first pick, and I just. I had to pick this one. Nobody else has yet, but I've got to pick the Florida Cracker as my favorite beer. Mm. That because, was my honorable mention. That yeah. totally, that was my next one. It, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I told Reverend Mark earlier before the show that if if there's just one style I was stuck on a, on a desert island with, it would be wit. I love wit beers. They're just so approachable, drinkable, and as much as I love double IPAs and barrel-aged stouts and you know, lambics. You know, sometimes I just want a nice, simple beer. Yeah. And for me, that's a wit. And mm-hmm. this is just, I think, a fine example of a, of a great Belgian wit. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's, it's pretty darn near perfect. You get that little bit of crackery bready, breadiness in it. Um, there's a very crisp carbonation to it. It's got that orange, lemon, coriander and all of those things work really well in this. Yeah. And when I say it's a perfect wit, I really mean that. And that's why I'm giving this one a five. Oh, wow. All right. All right. Listen to that thing. Oh, give me another one. Oh, very cool. All right. We will take a quick break and then we will end with me. Wow. Yes. Or not. Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, we are continuing our episode, and it's a brewery takeover with Cigar City. And up next is me to hmm. talk about my favorites. Notice just... she did not say top three or well, four, <laughs> five, six, <laughs> seven, eight. Yeah. Hold on, I'm we know gonna... it won't be more than ten. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yes, I can make up something. No, 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 no. Seriously. Um, you'll just have to be surprised. The first thing, though... The go first... away or I shall taunt you a second time. <laughs> Thanks, honey. 
<laughs> you know, the first one that I want to talk about is something that oddly you guys have not talked about. So I'm kind of excited about that. Um, it's the Highlight IPA, but the white oak version nice. of the Highlight. Yeah. So this one is seven and a half percent, and um, it is an American white oak version of the Highlight India Pale Ale. The white oak adds smoothing notes of vanilla and slight hints of dill to the aroma and flavor profile. The finish is elegantly dry due to the light tannin notes from oak aging. And though still loaded with hop flavor, hop bitterness is more restrained. And, um, yeah, this is like a 70 IBU um, hoppy beer. But I really, you know... We talked about Highlight. Well, a lot of you talked about Highlight and just, you know, and how wonderful it is and kind of sets the standard um, for IPAs. And believe me, it is. And I, I totally agree with you. But this, the Oak version to me, just like brings it up, like, you know, takes it from 10 to 11. Um, I, I just thought it had this smoothing effect. And I love the oakiness that was in there. I never thought that oaky against a real hoppy ipa would be so good together mm. but it really really is um i know i just don't get a lot of barrel aged ipas in my life i'm sorry you are so mm. neglected i i am <laughs> and you're gonna have to correct that buddy um but anyways i i just i i love the balance in this and i thought it was really good and i'm gonna have to try to seek this puppy out um this one i gave a four a body should really not make that sound second um the second one that i wanted to talk about was one that reverend mark talked about and that was the jolly ollie okay i'm totally yeah. in agreement with All you right. on this puppy well thank you you're welcome well you're welcome um did you guys know that the part of the reason they created jolly ollie was because uh well part of it was because they like skateboarders you know an ollie that's a skateboard move but the other reason was people would mispronounce high lie. Oh, yeah. So they would call it yeah. jo- Jolly. So, um, well, there you go. Yeah, you know, the first time, I, fact. first time I had a highlight, I was at like a kind of a noisy party, and someone said, here, have a highlight. So I thought, and I thought, this is the best Miller High Life I've, <laughs> I've ever had. Okay, yeah. you thought that too. So did I. I know that sounds really weird, yeah. but I'm like, is there this accent is, off yeah. or something? This is really good Miller yeah. High Life. Yeah. Hell, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. Well, okay, for me, first of all, I loved, yeah, I, I, I'm like, I wrote down, like, love this. And it's hoppy, and it's malty, and it's like when California meets London and they have a child, this is that child. They would name it Ollie? Mm. They would name it Ollie. Mm. It's a fine British name. It yeah. is. You know, Oliver, Ollie. Right, but I, I don't think California would agree to let London name the kid <laughs> Ollie. I think we'd want to name it like <laughs> Bianca or Apple. Yeah, but don't they grow olives in California? Maybe. Well, they grow avocados, they too. Do, You're going to name your kid. Yeah, no, I think they do. So that would be mm. like, okay, we got like, you know, the the Cali feel of the vegetable with... Oh, the, they can name it Cali? No. Cali Ollie? No. Thank oh, you. Whatever, Thank dude. you. But whatever. No, I, I mean, first of all, this doesn't feel to me like 7.75% ABV. No. This, this no, feels a all. lot lighter. But that being said... <laughs> it's stuck. It's stuck, right. Whatever. I promise. No, that being said, it's like, I mean, you get that malt backbone, which is there, and it's beautiful. But then the hops hang over the top, and it's... It's so well balanced. I really, really enjoyed this beer, and um, and it uh, wasn't just an American hop citrus explosion. No. It there was a lot of that in there, you but said there, it, was there like were ten hops. Yeah, there were so so you had some yeah. you know probably some Fuggles and some East Kent Goldings mm, and yeah. You know, I mean, so so maybe. so you yeah. got a little bit more you know kind of spice yeah. in there too. So yeah. Yeah, and that's what I enjoyed about it, too, is the fact, okay, some hoppy beers, when you say that you're going to have five, eight, nine, ten varieties, 
it is like hop explosion. You can't tell what's going on, and you get like all this acidiness. But they really balance that out too in itself. And I, I just I can't say enough about this beer. And um, I gave this puppy a four. A body should really not make that sound. Yay! Yay for you. Yay for me. And jolly Ollie. Okay. So, the other one that I wanted to talk about, which I'm surprised that you guys didn't talk about, was the Azimuth Session IPA. I didn't know how to say it. That's it's, why it was a good beer. That, that it, was also in my top five. I didn't, oh, I didn't think good. it was... Yay! Um, I thought it would have been really wonderful if I'd have had 20 ounces of it. Yeah. Um, there's that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought yeah. it would have been better if I hadn't been drinking bigger, hoppier beers all around it, because I felt like it got lost in the shuffle a little bit. Well, I I hit that pretty early because yeah. I knew that some of these other beers were going to blow the palate a little bit. So I worked my way up, and I actually hit the azimuth, uh, my third or fourth beer. See, you drank smarter, and I drank harder. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what? didn't they outlaw this because it's hallucinating? No, that's the other <laughs> stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. the other. Sh- yeah. let's, let's, that's a different episode. Okay. But, but thanks, though. Um, no, so this puppy is 4.2%, and the azimuth is the angle between the north vector and the perpendicular <laughs> projection of the star down onto the horizon. Yes. Yeah, and it's usually measured in degrees, and this concept is used in navigation, astronomy, engineering, mapping, mining, and artillery, except for the fact that this beer is brewed by um, Cigar City and Coronado Brewing Company in San Diego. And they have never fired artillery at anyone, um, to my knowledge. Do you know that? I mean... To my knowledge. See, you can say anything you want. <laughs> to your knowledge. If, if, if yeah. you say, if you end it with, to my knowledge, you can you can make the most outrageous claims ever. It's almost like saying, with all due respect... But okay. you can say, you know, um, you know, Reverend Mark has seventeen wives. To my knowledge, to my knowledge, <laughs> <laughs> as far as I know, could be nineteen. Yeah, could be, <laughs> you know, maybe he got rid of one of them. Now he only has sixteen. Who knows? Okay, fine. Thank you. Well, I I thought it was a great name for the beer, and then also a great. Beer. I mean, in terms of session IPAs, I thought this one was really flavorful. Um, it it was a nice balance between hoppy and malt. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, in part of my notes, I was saying that it's such a big flavor profile for such a low ABV. I could really get in trouble with this one. Like, you know, I want to drink this like water under an umbrella mm-hmm. at a beach or something like that. And um, this one I gave a four as well. My body should really not make that sound. And one last <laughs> one that, well, because I had a hard time. Yeah, I did. No, I was you could have a, 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 you know. I was laughing because you only had one more. I was like, that's weird. Fine, fine, An honorable fine. mention is due. Yeah. No, the um, the honorable mention that I want to do is another one that um, Reverend Mark had talked about, which is the Big Sound Scotch Ale. Um, mm. Yes, I, that is a beautiful beer. So this one is um, at 8.5%, and um, Big Sound Scotch Ale is dedicated to their good buddy Gino, the most punk rock bi- bagpiper you will ever meet. And the rest of the men and women of the Tampa Bay Pipes and Drums. It's brown in color. Big Sound makes huge notes of dark, sweet toffee with underlying mild notes of coffee in the aroma. The flavor starts with a light, with a slight note of cherry and then opens into a goliath of malt character with notes of dark, sweet toffee, coffee, and mild notes of toasted bread in the finish. Big Sound Scotch Ale pairs well with Haggis, Highland Game, Huge Heads, Enormous Pillows, and, of course, Bagpipe Music. Mm. I don't quite mm. understand. They kind of lost me at the Huge pipe. Heads. <laughs> <laughs> What's Nate? the old Mike Myers line? If it's not Scottish, it's crap. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Anyways, um, to reiterate what Reverend Mark had said, this is an awesome introduction into the world of what is a Scottish, you know, we heavy. It is, it's just so beautifully balanced. There's so many flavors going on. I got, a, um, obviously a lot of maltiness and cherries and toffee and dark fruits, but it was still light enough to not be too alcoholic overwhelming, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Because I tend to think a lot of wee heavies can be over the top. And, you know, you almost have to water them down like you do with whiskey just to be able to get all that flavor. You should um, water it down with some whiskey and see if that would... No? Okay. I'll, I'll have to try that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Um, but anyways, like Mark said, you know, it's a really great introduction into the f into this style. And um, just really impressive, you know, for Cigar City being a brewery that has been known for their hoppy beers, um, you know, and, and sort of their over-the-top flavors, um, you know, in their flavor combinations of, of different beers. This is so nice because, you know, it's just a... I hate to say it, but a wee heavy is a plain style. You really can't do anything to it, but yet they made this so well. And um, absolutely, thank you guys. Just keep doing what you're doing. And this puppy, I gave a five. All right. Yes. Listen to that time you need another. I just got the huge heads reference. So I married an axe murderer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the size of that boy's cranium. I, I enjoyed that beer too. So maybe top six. Aww. Yeah. I'm just I was keeping a tally here as we went. Out of the ten <laughs> beers, nine were mentioned. Yeah. So mm. hey, well which one so, was it? So yeah, let's talk about that poor kid that was left out. Which was a good beer. Oh yeah. yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, do you? Do you? Do you? Um, I have no idea. Oh yeah, it was, but yeah. it was a gusher. It was yeah, a gusher. That's, that's why. It was a gusher. I, that's yeah. why I didn't like yeah. it. Yeah. So um, this, the one that we haven't discussed yet, which we will, is Impy Barbicane's Moon Gun from Excuse Cigar me? City. <laughs> um, it is an amber, an American amber slash red ale, um, five percent ABV. MP Barbicane is the president of the fictional Baltimore Gun Club in Jules Verne's novel From the Earth to the Moon. And so. And uh, get the machine that goes. Bing! And that too. <laughs> um, yeah. That's because so they were trying to build a moon gun that would launch three people to the moon. I won't tell you how it ends. Okay. It's we'll called it's it. called a laser. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. So so let's talk about this beer. It was a good amber ale, but that's the thing. Amber ales just aren't sexy. Nobody puts <laughs> amber ales at the top of the list. <laughs> and I hope it does sexy beer. See, and yep. it, it stuck on its own that time. Because it, you know, ambers are sexy. <laughs> ambers can be sexy. Sure. Sadly, this guy. Well, yeah, you know, okay. Hey, some right. gen gentlemen prefer blondes, I guess. I guess. I guess. I think it may have been a little better, but, and it probably wasn't bottle conditioned, but it just seemed to, because it was very overly carbonated when we uncapped it. It yeah. just it just seemed to not really balance on my palate the way it might have. So we'll yeah. give you we'll give you another try on that. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't for me either. I, I just thought that something was a little off about it. Um maybe it was because it was gushing. I don't know. Dave, if you got any notes. I just didn't it made me angry when it, <laughs> it spilled it spilled on me. But you shouldn't have been shaking it the way you did. I was nervous. <laughs> you were nervous. <laughs> well, well yeah. there's that. You know. Okay. But overall, I think this was a really great flight. and It was. A, yeah. A, a great, um, I mean, besides the fact that we can't talk about, you know, the stout, which I love, um, I, I thought it was a great 
collective of you know of different styles that they have not only the hoppy stuff but you know the brown ale and the scotch ale that were not so hoppy if you will and um you know in terms of a brewery in general i mean this is a really good brewery because Solid. they're not just one particular style specific that you know they go all out in many directions and come up with like really good consistent flavor it would be cool to to go to the tap room you know and see what new little things they have and try you know i, I think the empty barbicane is a was a one-off you know but something like that you know get it fresh off the tap see it you know taste it when it's new um and even taste highlight you know fresh off the tap i've only had it Ooh. you know I, you know mm-hmm. in a can before mm-hmm. so it's that good you know in a can coming you know from alabama how good is it you know um straight out of the you know a couple of days old yeah and i think also the, the the florida cracker i mean you know uh wit beer is supposed to be served like right out of right away the fermenter yeah. practically you know so to have it there at the bar would be phenomenal i'd say yeah. location show cigar city tap room let's make it happen let's go yeah really we need to do that well anyways um i think this was a pretty good episode but sadly it is that time when we have to say goodbye to mm-hmm. our family of listeners we hope that you enjoyed this episode and you can catch all of our many episodes online as well as on soundcloud tune in stitcher youtube prx and spreaker our native media host itunes and our own android app are the easiest ways to enjoy the show on your phone just search for sip sud smokes on itunes or in the google play store we love to hear your feedback and you can reach us on at in Blech. You can reach us online at info at sipsudsmokes.com. Our daily tasting notes flow out on Twitter every day at sipsudsmoke, and our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news. Do us a favor and take the time to rate this episode and the other episodes that you listen to. Um, that's a big help to us, and we get to see your feedback as well. Make sure you go and check out our sponsor, Peabody Wine and Beer Merchants, at www peabodyswineandbeer.com and briefly go to boy kendall tell us about your blog my wife and i blog about beer at beermakes3.com and there we try to share the good news of good beer cool. nice well again i'd like to thank everybody for coming today go to boy Dave. oh that includes me yeah it does thank you for letting <laughs> me be here wherever Mark. So good to be with everybody. Yay. And go to Boy Kendall. Cheers, everyone. Always drink good beer. Well, thanks again, and we just ask you to keep on sipping. This has been a one tan hand production of Sip Suds and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time.